All right, with a huge slate of retailer earnings out this week, let's take a look back on this day in history. In 1951, in one of the biggest retail price wars ever launched, Macy's and Gimbel's, the two New York department store titans of the time, had been in intense competition for decades, even hosting rival Thanksgiving Day parades. Gimbel's in Philadelphia, Macy's over in New York. The stores often would undercut the other on price, such as in 1930, when Gimbel's began selling a toy ray gun at a below market cost of 19 cents. Macy's was selling the same toy for about 50 cents. Now that rivalry, it intensified over the next decade and was even a major plot point in the 1947 classic film, Miracle on 34th Street. But the laws of the time actually limited which items could be discounted and by how much. The main law here in the U.S. linked back to the Great Depression when the U.S. fixed prices on numerous essential items to stabilize businesses. Subsequent laws and regulations expanded on that idea, giving U.S. states the power to set minimum prices. The most restrictive were so-called fair trade laws adopted by 45 states, where if one store agreed to abide by a manufacturer's minimum selling price, the government then required all merchants to abide by that minimum as well. Now that artifice came crumbling down on May 21st, 1951, when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of easing those fair trade regulations. A week later, on May 28th, Macy's cut its prices 6% across the board on almost 6,000 fair trade items. When Gimbel's matched the 6% cut, Macy's would then slash prices another 6% and so on and so on. Men's suits that had been selling for 32 bucks dropped down to 19 in a matter of days. Fountain pens were discounted to $2 from four and kitchen pans went, from 40, went to 45 cents from around $1.40. Imagine that, 40, 50, 60% price drops on thousands of items all at once outside of the holiday season. It created a frenzy. The stores erected inventory charts in the lobbies and windows and would cross out and scroll new prices almost every hour. Customers would crowd around until they saw a price drop big enough to lure them over to the sales counter. Each store deployed teams of undercover shoppers to go to rival locations and check prices and then return to the home base to mark down whatever they felt would undercut their competitor. The price competition dragged in other New York retailers as well, including Bloomingdale, Saks, and Abraham and Strauss. Of course, something this sensational couldn't go unnoticed by regulators in Washington. By July of that year, the Federal Trade Commission had fielded numerous complaints of deceptive price practices and began to refine the rules that were in place. Ultimately, though, the price wars ended for more practical reasons. Heavy discounting obviously boosts sales, but often at the expense of profit margins. As the year wore on, Macy's executives made a decision to choose profitability and peace rather than continuing to fight that price war. And while discounting didn't end, it did revert back to more normal and seasonal discounts rather than that frenetic anything goes chaos stirred up in late spring of 1951.